all of us have a responsibility to communicate the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is important, however, to remember that communicating the good news is more than passing, transmitting the content. Of course, the content of the good news is important. But equally important is the way we convey the contents of our belief. And this is becoming a very daunting and challenging task for all of us. How do we communicate effectively the content of the good news to our modern generation, to our younger set of people? That is why many young people are leaving the church today, because the good news do not seem to address them or to get their attention, or they cannot find relevance in what is said. Until recently, the ordinary way of discourse is always an intellectual discourse. We are used to speaking about our faith in theological terms, in legalistic way, in liturgical language, that today the world do not really quite understand. To communicate good news is not to communicate words. We are trying to communicate a person that is Jesus the Christ. How do we communicate a person? Words will never be able to convey the person that we want to communicate. At the end of the day, what changes people is not words. It is an encounter, a personal experience. If people become Christian, it cannot be the result of some intellectual discourse, agreement with some doctrines. It must be a personal encounter and experience of Jesus as the Lord in their life. This is why when Jesus was preaching the good news, he did not teach like the scribes and the Pharisees, using all the theological language in those days. Jesus himself was clear. What was his mission? His mission was to communicate his Abba experience. His experience, his intimacy with his father. But how do you communicate an experience? How do you communicate something that is so intensely personal? Have you ever tried to communicate an experience to someone who never had that experience? They think we are weird. They think we are crazy because they cannot identify with our experience unless they have had a similar experience. And so, if Jesus was to communicate his own experience of his Father's unconditional love, he would have to use words and images that the people already had some encounter with. That is why he picked up images from daily life events. At home, in the farm, on the seaside, these are the events that people encounter every day. And so, by using these images, we will be able to get them to have at least a little inkling of what we have experienced. Hence, the way that Jesus preached the good news is always parables. What are parables? Parables are extended metaphors. Metaphors are taken from daily life example. And when you put all these metaphors together, you get a story. When you make up a story, you have a parable. And these stories are often interesting, thought-provoking, and most of the time, 
has an ending that is surprising. So much so that those who listen to the story would be challenged, would be shocked at how the event turned out. Those who listen to the story should be able to identify with the character of the event. If some of the stories, some of the parables that Jesus taught have not struck us deeply, it is because we are not living at that time. We do not know the circumstances, the historical situation, the cultural expectations. If we know, then the story will make sense. That's why those who listen to the parables immediately could grasp what Jesus was trying to convey to them. So parables are beautiful ways to convey the God experience. The most powerful way to make someone an apostle is to take someone who was a great sinner. When a great sinner is converted, he becomes a real apostle like St. Paul. He becomes a witness. The church, therefore, cannot be inward-looking, cannot be parochial-minded. The church does not exist for herself. We are not here to build some enclaves, you know, some small communities taking care of ourselves. That is not what the church is. The church exists for the world. The church exists for broken people, for wounded people. The church does not exist for herself. That's why those of us who tend to be parochial minded, thinking of my parish, my organization, that is not what the gospel is all about. It is about reaching out, providing shelter to the hopeless. Either we transform society or society will transform us. We must go out to the battlefield, go out to the people, to smell the sheep, to suffer with them. Then we understand what it means to be poor, to be oppressed. That is what the church is called, a transforming agent. Can we find more creative means to communicate the good news? Otherwise, we will lose our audience. Today, we have the use of technology, Instagram, Facebook. Today, catechesis can no longer be a one-way lecture. It has to be interactive. We have to use digital media. There will be dialogue. There must be time for experience. Unless all these elements are there, our young people will not be interested. Because our young people today are used to seeing images, sounds, experience. If you want to capture this audience, let us rethink the way we communicate the good news. 